around. Yes. Awesome. All right. I think. Uh, can uh, Can you see me, Nima? All right. So. Here, I'll try to uh, get used to this. Um, I take off the sound. On in uh, one second here, once this uh, feed gets settled in. Awesome. Thanks, David. All right. Um, yeah, I'll get going in one second here. Okay, well, um, to everybody who's, who's watching, I'm going to get going. I've got a short... Through it, it's uh, it's quite informationally dense. So hopefully afterward, we can have some good discussion about it. So to start off, I graduated from UCLA in 2006 with a degree in political science. Uh, shortly after graduation, I, read, I then read *For a New Liberty* by Murray Rothbard, and then I read *Human Action* by Ludwig von Mises. So after I read those three books, I was a um, total libertarian in the sense of non-aggression. And interestingly, at that point, I began ruining every dinner party I went to. Because I was the guy talking about total peace. And I was the crazy one. So at, at that point, I didn't even want to engage friends with similar beliefs as me. So I put up a web page looking for libertarians and entrepreneurs. My two favorite uh, Lauren, I think you got logged. Okay, you're back. Um, so anyways, I became a libertarian. I uh, had to find like my I put up a, a meetup page looking for libertarians and entrepreneurs, my two favorite people. Amazingly, I found a few, and then a few more. That is how the Society of Libertarian Entrepreneurs began. And now we have chapters all across the world, and at most benefit from socializing, networking, sharing ideas, and in general, plugging into a local, of ideological allies. But that's not what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, really, through the process, I've discovered, I've had an epiphany about the most effective strategy for achieving freedom in our lifetime. Discovery, uh, David, rebuffing. Uh, all right, I hope, uh, I hope you get um, this discovery for how we can achieve total freedom in our lifetime began with me looking and you can't help but notice a small group of very powerful people who control government and enslave us. But there are people controlling government and enslaving us. They have our, our face in the mud you work. I make a hundred dollars. There's a gun pointed in my face, taking forty of those dollars. It's illegal for me to drink raw. I can't get on an airplane without being forcibly uh, touched. Uh, and you're wrong. For somebody with self-esteem, this is this cannot stand. So my first reaction was, let's fight them. But I'm also smart, and I realized that that's a totally unviable solution. So then my, my next thought was to run away control the entire planet. That's not a viable strategy. Uh, my next thought was, let's awaken the masses through it. But they control all the media and education. So that's not a good strategy at present. Uh, Dave, 
It's David, it's, uh, it's you, me, Lauren, and Nima. So I'm glad to have you here. Keep chatting if, if you have any questions you want me to slow down or, or if, uh, if you're not getting the, uh, the feed. So we cannot fight them directly. We can't run away. We can't just awaken the masses. So I looked deeper and I asked myself, what do the power elite know that libertarians don't? You know, the billions of dollars, control, and libertarians with truth and justice on their side do not get what they want. And the answer, simply put, is that life is not fair. Robert, um, yeah, I think I think there is a, a bit of a lag on my side too. Uh, hopefully, uh, you can still and uh, you can chat in any questions that you have. So, um, the, the power elite get what they want began with the understanding that life is not fair. The power elite know this, that, that we actually live in a jungle. Power is the only thing separating victims from those who can resist aggression. This, this was important. I mean, it's true. You think of a squirrel in the jungle or in the forest, and he only stays alive. It wouldn't be fair, but because he uses his skills to avoid predation, running or hiding or working at night. And it's sad, but as, as citizens of a country, we're being hunted, or as Stefan for our tax revenue. And, and this is serious. And I've, I've met some of the power elite. I hate that they dominate us. But the fact is most of them could walk into your room right now and they have training. Uh, most of them have enormous amounts of education and business experience. So they, they could walk into your room and with their productive experience, And in and, and, and sets up and in general, that's why they dominate us in life. It's through their intent accumulated the power necessary to control us. And by power, I mean in a modern context, one's ability to communicate um, one's knowledge, one's experience. Uh, one's money and actual tangible assets. Together, these are the resources that anybody uses to get what they want. And self-improvement is getting better categories by eating healthier, working out, taking classes, uh, getting experience, work experience, and building a so building a friend, uh, a network of friends. So the, the takeaway so far from, from fair, power is the only thing separating victims from those who can resist aggression, and that self-improvement is how we Therefore, the self-improvement of libertarians, those who live by a code of non-aggression, is the first freedom. This is also legal, safe, and personally rewarding. Uh, hey, yeah, Tyler, there is a group uh, in San Jose. Uh, .com. We are uh, S-O-L-E dot com, and yeah, there is a San Jose chapter. So, uh, welcome. I'm in... I'm, um, 
So like I was saying, self-improvement of libertarians is the first and most important step toward freedom. From this perspective, we, we have to stop waiting for the revolution to occur. Freedom won't Libertarians, we have the best ideas for how to organize society, but that's not enough. We have to rise up if we're going to secure freedom for ourselves. In this sense, every push-up we do, every class we take, every dollar we save, we forge is also a step toward freedom. I, I see myself as part of a new generation of gentlemen who will not submit. And I'm looking for heroes. I challenge to bring the intensity of a warrior to their self-improvement. If we're not willing to be like Rocky from the movie and get up at sunrise and bust our ass all day we will never know freedom. I believe that we honor Jesus and Murray Rothbard by being charming, successful, well-connected men and women of society. Respect the non-aggression axiom. Hey, coming up uh, for San Jose Society of Libertarian Entrepreneurs. These successful, charming, well-connected libertarians who live by a code of warriors the freedom movement has ever known. And as libertarians increase our power individually, the feeling that we all have, this, this sinking, hopeless feeling, will change as we become the change we wish to The Austrian economists and philosophers, they left us a complete logical breakdown of the morality of laissez-faire capitalism. Our job is not to add to this intellectual work, but to take and use it to achieve freedom and prosperity. But first things first, Ben Franklin said, if you give me three hours to chop down a tree, I will spend the Join me in sharpening the most important acts, yourself. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everybody who heard. This This is the end of my talk. I really appreciate you listening in. And at this point, questions or ideas, we can chat on the, uh, the channel. And I'd be happy to uh, discuss any ideas or comments. Uh, Tyler, I'd, I'm, I'd be curious to find out how you heard Robert, uh, thank you um, for listening. What kind of ventures have I heard of? Uh, Tyler, what, what do you mean more specifically? Ventures? Something different? Uh, bu business opportunities? Well, in the Los Angeles group, we've got a large group of, of people all across uh, the board working in different industries from programmers 
students, retired people, and uh, okay. Um, so I, for example, I'm working on uh, sustainable agricultural projects. I think that, uh, which seems like we will, agricultural land and commodities is a, is a good place to be in in general. And I also believe that these um, food products without a dependence on foreign oil or pharmaceuticals um, or foreign fertilizers and also increase the margins so that sustainable agriculture is going to become more profitable over time. So I'm developing a grass-fed But the, yeah, some are libertarian, uh, some are just non-political, just regular jobs. And the groups um, at our monthly meetups are really nice and socialize and just hang out with people who are not violent um, or not ignorant to uh, non-violence. And some it's just a real local kind of immediate thing, depending on people's uh, shared values and expertise. Oh, I'm sorry, Lauren. Uh, it's grass-fed beef. Um, it's it's a it's a way of raising cows off of grass, 100% uh, meant to eat in nature. 90% um, of beef in America is corn finished or corn fed. Corn is a totally alien substance um, for the cows, and it makes them sick. So then you have to give them antibiotics, and it changes in the nutritional value as well. I'd be curious if, if anyone's still listening, um, how you heard about this conference, and if anything in particular the most or what you've liked um, the most about the conference so far Great. Well, with that, I've I've covered everything I've got, and uh, if there aren't, I'm turning the channel back over, and um, I'll put up a link to the Society of Libertarian Entrepreneurs website. And thanks again for listening. Uh, Jordan, do I think libertarians consider themselves victimized too much? I do. Um, when you read the libertarian literature, it's obvious that it's not fair for governments or kings or warlords to control people and to tax them, to feel like a victim, because we are. We absolutely are victims. If we're gonna achieve freedom, in an unfair world, it's only going to come from powerful people. People exist aggression, and, and that will come in a lot of different ways. But if you're rising up and becoming healthier and more connected, you're going to use those resources to resist aggression. I think that a victim mentality slows you down. 
as effective. And going out and getting stronger every day and, and seeing that as a step toward freedom empowering. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh question um I think you you need a, an idea which you can develop a business plan around. If you don't have an idea, hanging out with local libertarian entrepreneurs is a good way to have fun and help you develop ideas which you can then refine through a business plan. <laughs> 